Well, I gotta tell you, these Chinese inverters really like to passively cool. It is, it's throwing a little bit of heat up the top here, out of this vent. I'm not super fond of that. <coughs> so, we'll see. It's very slight, like, you gotta feel it with the back of your hand because you can't really feel it with the front. But uh, there's definitely heat in this area and no heat anywhere else. Like this is cold. Actually, this is starting to warm up, but it is cold. Bottom side is fairly cold. The front is, see it's, it's warm here and on the top. <coughs> Went and took a cough drop. So if I sound funny, it's because I'm trying not to cough. As I went inside, I lowered the wattage to around 500 watts and then I came back outside and brought it back up to, now it's at 1300. That's because we popped up another voltage. One volt, so as the inputs go <coughs> down, the output goes up. <coughs> so I find with these uh, inverters, but it's no big deal. 49.6 volts still. <coughs> now we're 0.4 of a volt difference. I'm wondering if these are getting warm. Nope, they're not getting warm. Nothing's getting warm. I just have them jumpered to the same spot as where my Magna Sign inverter's hooked up to. Then we're hooked up to the same spot. <coughs> 350 amp fuse for this thing. That's way overkill. If, if this thing has any problems, I'm counting on the 80 amps in here to go because this is temporary. This is not, I'm just testing purposes here. Just something to make a video about, guys. <coughs> we got up to 1317 watts. Still running. Warm to the touch now. A little bit warm. The whole thing seems to be heating up ever so slowly. <coughs> seems like they've designed it in a way to passively cool quite well, at least at this load point in a cool environment like I'm in. <coughs> seems to be doing a decent job of cooling. There it is. They turned on. Up here is blowing nice and warm. Down here is blowing pretty cool. So this is a larger heat sink with two sets of two inputs and four outputs and this is a smaller one down here with just two sets of inputs. This one's cold like I said, this one's warm. It's actually fairly quiet. <coughs> That's awesome. Seems like it's working. I can feel it sucking through these vents like crazy. Oh, that's good. That's a good design. So it's sucking right directly onto them and pulling it through. I like where they've placed these uh, these vents. So not only does it pull through the front, it pulls through the sides. That's good of them. <coughs> so maybe this will be a half decent inverter. We'll see. Maybe. Yeah, pulls through everywhere quite nicely. Only has to turn on for a little bit. Now this whole case is totally, totally uh, got cool, except for actually right here on the input is slightly warm now. Just slightly. I'm wondering if it's because it was pulling the heat through and actually warmed this up. Interesting. <coughs> Still running it. I want to make this cycle on and off a few times while I'm watching it. So I can uh, maybe get some confidence to leave it on when I'm in another room. Well guys, I, I just went to go start the generator. Came back and the fans are on again. Awesome. So it seems to be working. Cycling on and off. I think the problem with these things is if you overload, or not overload, if you just load them when they're cold, a section of the heat sink can get quite a bit warmer than the rest before that uh, 
uh, thermal sensor trips and turn some fans on and I think that's one of the easy ways to blow this thing. But it seems to be working good now. It's cycling on and off. The top is obviously warmer than the bottom. <coughs> it's working good. Iron 13 volts. Still pumping out a lot of heat. Here's what uh, the inverter is putting out. Got the Mr. Heater Buddy warming this place up too, and it's actually nice and warm now. <coughs> and we're gonna hook up that generator to the Magnus Ion Inverter, and we're gonna charge at the same time and replenish these batteries. So we're gonna see if we can charge faster than we're discharging. Okay, so I just hooked the generator up. <coughs> just switched the charging. Let's see. I have this set so it only pulls about 1500 watts because I don't want to burn up any extension cords or anything. Don't want to have to worry about it. <coughs> this is what it's putting into my batteries. This is what it's taking from the grid or from the generator. on that inverter just kicked in again that's good that's cycle number three you got 1400 and 1500 watts coming in going up and down because it's it's keeping uh, to a threshold I kept it on we're doing pretty good so that is now pretty much the charger in this thing here is running this inverter. So that's charging the batteries and now it's running the inverter. <coughs> yep, fans are still on, still doing a good job. Everything seems to be working nicely. Fans turned off. <coughs> Everything seems to be okay so far. Just gonna keep testing this thing for a while longer and uh, get a good feel for what this thing can do. All right, move up the ante a little bit here. Add an extra 250 watts. We are now pulling 1550 watts. So we're going to see how this thing fares. We are now pulling almost exactly 50% of what this inverter is rated for. The fan should be turning on and off a lot more now. <coughs> we still have the batteries being charged, but we're pulling more and we're putting in. Plus, oh, there goes the fans. So now they're turning on every few minutes now. So it seems to be working well. That's good. I'm liking this so far. Seems to be able to cool itself pretty good at 1500 watts. These are my two loads. Electric heater, 300 watt halogen. <coughs> They're just dead loads. Nothing special. Check my board where uh, my clamp meter is around. Seems to be doing a good job. And again, it was getting warmer, but it seems to be able to cool itself just fine. This inverter seems likes to be oriented this way, it seems, because this is the hottest point. It has vents right above it, so the heat can, es can escape. It seems to be working really nicely. Okay, so I upped the output power of this generator to the inverter. I upped it by one amp AC, so it's now 1760 watts going in. 
32 amps at 54.4 volts. The fans turned on again. Everything seems to be working real nicely. So, I'm calling that a win for today. Hope you guys enjoyed these videos. Uh, please stay tuned and I'll keep coming out with other stuff similar to this. So I got both my generators going right now because that one I shut the gas off on and that one I just started. And that is because uh, one of the guys from Battery Experts just called me. He saw my video on this thing and he saw how my little generator couldn't uh, power it. And he explained to me why. I've been just playing with this. So let's go back to meter. This is what you normally look at. So he explained to me, you go to setup, scroll to charger, so number three charger. And this is what I was playing with. I was limiting the amount of AC current going in to this thing. <clears throat> so, but even on the minimum, on the minimum, it was too much for my one inverter. So he told me, oh sorry, no, I went to there. I gotta scroll over until I hit max charge rate percentage. I had this at 100%. I figured that meant that it would charge my batteries to 100% state of charge. But apparently this is not what that means at all. This is, this is 50% power to the batteries so it's still gonna charge them to hundred percent but it's gonna only charge at 50% load so I can turn let's see I can turn uh, <coughs> so this is my AC, AC input what I got it set to 8 amps right now if I set this the way it's set right now at 50% it should only take four AC amps well that's what I'm banking on you anyways let's give it a try Something just switched over. Let's go to meter. Hold these two together. Let's see what happens. <clears throat> ah. Wow, my. Oh. I forgot to shut the choke off. Oops. That'd be why that didn't work. <coughs> Just wondering why it wasn't revving up. <coughs> okay, let's see if it's gonna try again or something. Okay. <coughs> Recycled it, plugged it in, unplugged it. <coughs> now it should actually uh, rev up the generator when it starts taking some power. I should be able to find a nice safe operating. I, I kind of want to take about six or seven hundred watts out of that generator. That's what I want to run at. <coughs> Here we go. I still have it set too high. Okay. So we're going to go into setup. Going to go over to charger. I have this set to 8 amps. I'm also going to turn that down to 5 amps. Okay, and now I also have it set to 50% charge. Okay, and go to meter. And I'm going to cycle this again. Okay, so. <coughs> okay, so. Let's see what we get here. See if that little, that's only 800 watts continuous, 1000 watts peak. Let's see what it can run. There we go. 566, 600. <coughs> I 
This is about where I'd like it to sit. Let's see how much higher it runs. Oh. Looks like it overloaded or something. Oh, no, it's at its max charge. Look at that. I don't think it overloaded. Yup, it's still working. It's definitely at the inverter's max, so it's surging up and down, keeping the batteries at float. One thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to setup. I'm gonna go to my charger settings. I'm actually gonna turn it down to 40%. There we go. Just because it was getting cl too close to its max for me. I want about 700 watts max going into this thing, which looks like it's doing now. Well, thank you very much, battery experts, for uh, the advice. It worked great. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. To throw this in here, I just stopped the video and started again. It was surging up and down, surging up and down to figure out what it needed to put to the batteries. It's only putting seven amps into the batteries. Pulling 240-ish watts. And now I can use this nice small little generator that sips fuel instead of this big one that takes quite a bit more. Uh, and yeah, this is only for when I really need it, if I'm actually out of power. And this one's a lot heavier to move around. That one's really easy. Now I'm just waiting on an hour meter for this generator.